Hello my sweet friends and welcome to DIY with Nadia. With me is my sidekick Louie and today we are going to do a compilation video of 10 year-round wreaths. The reason I decided to do this video is a lot of you have been contacting me saying, Nadia, I don't have a lot of space, storage space to keep these wreaths. So I need wreaths that kind of would go towards a few seasons or maybe interchangeable wreaths or something like that. So I said, you know what? Let's put together top 10 year round wreaths. Let's get started. For today's wreath, I'm going to be using a Dollar Tree Evergreen wreath. And yes, this one's a little sparse, but for what we need, it's going to do perfect. The really cool part about using something like this is if you can see the back, the wiring that they make this wreath with is really, really flexible. If I wanted to make a square wreath, I can definitely just bend a corner and you saw how easy that was. Or if you wanted to make an oval wreath, just bring it in and you got a beautiful oval wreath. The possibilities are really endless with this one as far as what shape you want. For deco mesh, I'm going to be using this beautiful burlap deco mesh. It does have little white in it, but it's so pretty. Any burlap deco mesh you have on hand will do if you're going to do something really similar to this. I'm going to be cutting this deco mesh into 28 inch strips. Since my board is 24 inches and I have half an inch on here, I'm going to add three and a half inches on my ruler and I'm just going to set that right underneath my mat. That's how I do it. That way I have the 28 inches that I need. Because of the white fabric in this burlap, you would either need to use a heat gun or scissors and I'm going for my scissors because I don't have a vented area in my office right now so I'm going to do that I have all eight strips ready to go and what I'm going to do is well first take this off but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one two three four and then five six and seven eight meaning since we don't have an exact kind of location I'm just going to make it easy on myself as far as my strips I'm just going to start on one side and I tend to fold just in the beginning we're not even rolling anything just give it a fold and off you go just gathering it straight in the center and then come in open two up and then have one go one way the other the other way and I'm just going to wrap it around a wreath right there there you go. Next one's gonna go complete opposite on this side. Twist it and bend it back. Now that I have my initial four, I'm just going to do the same thing with the rest of these and just go in between each of the four. Look at this gorgeous wreath. You can hardly see the greenery, but if it's peeking out here and there, not a big deal at all. Next, I'm going to grab four green pipe cleaners, and these are 12 inches, and I'm going to cut them in half. I'm going to use them to make little bundles to put in the center of each of the curls. The main ribbon I'm going to be using for my bundles is going to be this one. It's black with some ivory stripes. And as you can see, it has little sparkles in it. But because of the ivory and this vintagey look, you can definitely get away with using this for a farmhouse wreath. The length of the ribbon will depend on you, depending on how far you want it to stick up. I decided to make mine 9 inches. And so I'm just going to go back and forth. Since we have eight of the burlap ruffles, I'm going to make 16 of these little strips. I have all 16 pieces of ribbon cut into nine inch strips. And all I'm going to do is just fold the ends right here and make little dovetails. I'm going to finish this off in a second, but until then, I'm going to grab some more holiday stuff. These are berry garlands, and you can get these year round in any uh, craft store. They're nine feet long, and I'm going to make strips of about eight to nine inches using wire cutters to cut this. I'm just going to fold the ends just like that. Let me measure about eight to nine inches. The reason I say eight to nine is for example, right here, you don't want to cut it right at the berry. You want to cut it in the middle. So this one's going to be more of a nine inch thing. And then right here, this tip, I'm going to go ahead 
and just fold it back. It's not that hard to do. We're going to put them together along with our striped ribbon. I got everything to go to make my bundles and then for the finishing touch in the center I'm going to put a little cotton bud. Got these at Joann's. Taking these apart is harder than it looks which means these are really good quality. They all come with little wires so I'm going to undo the wire here so I can get a longer wire and I'm going to twist this one right here and then these two together right here and then this way we can put it around our little centerpiece this way. I'm going to start by bringing two of my ribbon just crisscrossing them and then with these we're going to just lay them just like that not a big deal make sure berries are not in that center bring this together with our pipe cleaner kind of move it up two beautiful twists in the back and then we're going to wrap it around our first bundle here twist in place then we're going to grab our cotton pod put that in the center and then twist that in place and I have my first little bundle the ribbon we're just going to curl out just like that but the berries we're going to kind of push them up towards the center that way they're going to be noticeable a little bit more and especially when you're looking up close you can see the berries it is really pretty so I'm going to go ahead and finish off doing all the bundles going all the way around before we get to the centerpiece I just want to show you how I did the ribbon so if I have my little X going this way right here then this one is going to go this way where it's kind of interlocking and so on and so forth you can see the same thing here where it's going like this and then this one is turned sideways like this and then of course this one is like this and I'm just going to go ahead and straighten all of that out and keep on going all the way around but before I do that let's work on the centerpiece I'm going to use this beautiful Dollar Tree sign it says home sweet home and then I'm going to grab some wire that's black just like my sign here and I'm going to cut four strings and I'm just being generous and eyeing how long I want these to be and by the way this is a 26 gauge wire and all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my wires and I'm going to tie them on here and I'm just going to go right around tie it in the back give it a few twists here and then right here on that center bar and you know what I think I want one at the bottom so I'm going to cut another one from a distance these are going to be pretty much unnoticeable right in the center of the wreath and then start attaching them to the sides of the wreath and this bottom one is going to be nice because it's just going to stabilize it in place after I have it in place I'm just going to pull up my ribbon just to kind of work it in and that's it our wreath is done very simple very easy and I love the fact that this wreath is an everyday wreath you can have it in your home in a specific spot the whole year round and this makes for such a perfect gift white spode inspired wreath we are going to be using some pipe cleaners a 14 inch metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree I usually use five rolls of deco mesh for this wreath but if you're going to do it where you have two colors you can definitely do two and a half rolls of each color the decoration that I'm going to make for this wreath you can use it without the wreath it is going to be really pretty first thing I'm using is a little sign from the Dollar Tree I'm going to be using the back of it then I have this home sign I got this at Michael's for under a dollar for the ribbon I'm going to be using this beautiful dark blue one and I found this one on craft outlet also it reminded me a little bit of that spode print and so I decided to use both of these and we're going to make a two layer bow on here it is going to be super cute first thing you want to take care of is your pipe cleaners and I'm going to be cutting 
cutting them into four inch strips after I cut them into four inches I always like to give them a little bit of a fold just like that into a little V that way it's just easier to grab and work with them the Dollar Tree deco mesh is six inches in width and five yards in length we are going to be cutting 12 inch little strips from this deco mesh that will give us 15 little strips per section we're going to take those strips make them into the Nadia method little bows and on our wreath form we are going to do 12 bows per section 12 bows times six sections that's going to give us 72 bows if you use five rolls you're going to have about three left over here and there but then again if you're going to use the six rolls and do two and a half and two and a half you can definitely make a few more and do maybe even 14 if you can fit them in but i'm telling you this is going to be nice and tight and full as it is just using two and a half rolls of each color to cut the deco mesh you can either use scissors a rotary cutter like i usually do or a heating tool if you're going to use a heating tool please make sure that you are in a very well ventilated area every time i cut i'm just going to let it naturally roll and put it to the side make sure to look for deco mesh that is nice and smooth on the end my blue one is not as well rolled as my white one so I'm going to be a lot careful with this one, but you definitely want to make sure that you get rolls that are beautifully rolled up just like this. I'm all done cutting up my white deco mesh. Now I'm moving on to my blue. To make the bow, I'm going to first just let it naturally unroll until it's overlapping about an inch to an inch and a half. Then I'm going to pinch both sides here where it's overlapping and here you can see really well that it's overlapping right there and I'm going to bring it down with the overlapping right in the middle with this finger right here I'm just going to hold it in place and then putting my thumb at the bottom of our little uh, bow here I'm just going to bring it up when I'm done bringing it up this is the smooth end and this is where we brought it up on the smooth end I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner put it over the center and then right here to make the bow pop a little bit I'm just going to kind of tighten it up with my fingers right here I'm just going to pull on my pipe cleaner just like that and as you could see it kind of popped up I'm going to give it two twists and this bow is ready to go on a wreath let's make another one naturally unroll it and then when it's overlapping about an inch to an inch and a half pinch it on both sides then i'm going to bring it down with the overlapping right in the middle hold it on top with my thumb i'm just going to bring it up grab it i'm going to put it upside down grab a pipe cleaner put it over the center of the bow right here we're going to kind of pull on our pipe cleaners two twists and look at this you can't see the fraying you can't see the ending so one of the endings is right here on the outside and it's really sealed in and then the other side of the endings is on the inside of the bow on the other side sealed in no fraying and we're ready to put these on our wreath form I have the bows all ready to go here I usually just go in a zigzag and because we only have two colors if we do zigzag then we're going to have one color on the outside one on the inside so what i do is i'll do blue blue white white blue blue white white that way i have blue on top blue towards the center and then next i'm going to grab the white and we're going to just keep on going like that we're going to have 12 in each section six blue six white in each section and we are just going to continue going blue white blue white going all the way around two at a time so one blue on the top row one blue on the bottom row and in the back i'm going to keep it clean after I twisted my bow in place, I'm just going to kind of gather the pipe cleaners towards the end because they're quite short. And then I'm going to fold them in half 
and kind of fold them back behind the actual row. Another quick tip for this wreath is I usually work from the back. I just attach right in the back, have it upside down, and that way I'm already counting as I'm going along. And it's a little easier than just looking in the front where you see all the mesh. And that's it. I'm just going to continue working and going all the way around. Now I'm grabbing my circular sign, just getting rid of the jute cord. I'm going to give my sign two good coats of this Rust-Oleum Chalked in Linen White. Now I'm going to grab my home sign and I'm going to give it a coat of white paint on top. This way when I'm going to be painting it blue, it's going to show up a lot nicer. As I'm trying to get the perfect blue, someone over here got the perfect blue on their paw right there. So now I gotta go clean this little kitty, don't I? Now all I'm doing is just grabbing some blue acrylic paint and I'm going to paint the home sign. As my home sign is drying, I want to do the bow on here and I'm literally going to do it by eye. I'm just eyeing the tail where I want it to be and I'm going to do a four loop bow. This is going to be my background bow because what I want is I want the four loops on the side and then with this bow, I want that to be in the center right here between these two loops. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it. I'm trying to do a bow without using my bow maker because not everyone has a bow maker. So when we're making a simple bow like this, we can definitely just do it without the bow maker. If you're new to making bows, definitely grab the ribbon that has the wire edging because that is going to help you poof up the bow and make it as pretty as possible. I'm going to take it to that same length make my loops making sure it's the same length of loop that's about there clamp it all together I'm going to grab a floral wire you can just grab another pipe cleaner for this when I have everything together I'm going to take my bow and I'm going to fold it in half just like this and then these sides I'm going to fold out just like that it's going to give you that perfect little poof right here it's going to crunch it well right here so we're just going to do that and then I'm going to grab my floral wire give it a nice tug in the center and I'm just wrapping the floral wire around the center whatever ribbon you're going to use in the back that's what you want in the center so I cut off a little piece and I'm going to hot glue it to the back of the bow so I don't burn myself, I'm just going to use a little rubber finger to hold it in place. Now I'm going to cut the tails. I'm just going to fold them in half and cut together just like that. I glued the home sign straight onto my little board. After I attached my home sign, I realized that my tails are a little too long. So you can do one of two things. You can cut them off or you can make what I call banner tails. I'm going to fold them in half and then we're going to bring them back and it's going to make this beautiful little wave. Let's do the top ribbon so you can see a little better. We're going to fold it in half. We're going to pinch on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put fingers right in the back of it, my thumbs right there in the back. And I'm going to bring this forward and then you have a beautiful banner tail just like that and now it's out of the way and it's super cute i'm going to do the same thing to this side too now it's time to hot glue my bow to my actual sign so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give a little bit of hot glue right there in the center i'm hot gluing anything that would be touching the actual board right here the actual circle just like that you can also do a hot glue on the tails if you wanted to to attach my sign i'm just going to put some pipe cleaners on the back and yup i should have done this before but i did not so i'm just going to hold it in place and I know that I need one right here and right there. I'm going to grab my hot glue gun. 
Grab a pipe cleaner, put it right on there. A little bit more of hot glue and put anything you have on hand. I'm going to just put a leftover ribbon piece right on there. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to hold it in place while it dries and then we can attach it to our wreath. My wreath is all done. It's beautiful, it's full. And now I'm going to add the sign straight in the middle. I always like to connect my signs on these intersections because that way I can guarantee that my sign won't move around. on this wreath I am going to be using a Dollar Tree wreath form and I would consider these um, on the easier side to find comparing to some other ones that I have shown on this channel but these come in a set of two which is kind of nice and what we're going to do is do a very simple ribbon wreath for this method you can use burlap ribbon that's anywhere from two to four inches but anything bigger, I do recommend using a much bigger wreath form. This particular one is three inches and this is an eight inch wreath form. So I think it'll work out really, really nice. And by the way, this is 10 yards of burlap ribbon. I got this beautiful fabric ribbon from burlapfabric.com. They actually send it to me, but it's not that expensive and you can get it and do some beautiful, beautiful wreaths with this. We're just going to start on the first one and I always start kind of from the inside and work my way out. It's just always how I've done it. I'm going to grab a piece of floral wire you don't need much this is just to lock it in and I'm going to come in from the inside just like this and then here you could do whatever you want I kind of zigzag in and out kind of sewing it not really sewing but I just want to kind of cover and bring together this this row a little bit because we're going to be squeezing this anyway so I wouldn't worry about it too much but I just, that's what I do, you guys. That is what I do. And I just bring it together, tighten it up. And it kind of looks like this. And so I'm just going to take this little ending and I'm going to kind of arch it. Just kind of make it go inside. So it's nice and secured and safe. But as you see, this frame part it is from the inside. It's not going to show. To get started, we're going to kind of twist it in. So we're going to kind of twist it in. The, I feel like the beginning and the end of this is the most crucial and most important. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So once you made that one loop, and I'm going to do it again, just going to push it out. And the height of it is depending on you. I like to do for wreaths like this size, um, two fingers. So I usually do two fingers for wreaths that are anywhere from 8 to 12 inches and then anything above like 14 and then you know it goes on from there. I do three fingers or more. It just depends on how big you're doing it. So I'm going to just do two fingers and I just kind of hold it right there and push it through the next one. Two fingers and then as soon as I have that, I'm just going to push it to the side. I'm going to hold it with one hand and I'm going to give it two twists. Twist one and twist two kind of, I just bring it back into the front row. And then once again, I have two fingers. Hold it right there. I'm holding it on the first ring. Push the second one in. Two fingers and bring it in and the really cool part about this is if you really kind of tried you can go from season to season with this wreath look at this it, I just started and it already looks beautiful twist one twist two 
and I'm going straight in to my first row. Now, if I was doing this with three rows, let me know if you want me to do that um, with, uh, you know, the regular uh, Dollar Tree form. I can definitely do that. I just thought I would start for beginners with a small one like this. So once again, two fingers and I'm just holding it with my other thumb going back in here, going up, two fingers right there. And we're pushing it in. I love doing this technique. And honestly, this is for beginners. Two fingers. All you do is just push it in and out and going up and down. Well, once I have it, I bring it together and push it to the side. Do this over and over until I am done. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm coming to the end. Look at this. Nice, beautiful and full. I basically used up the whole um, 10 yards of the burlap ribbon. I'm making my two final twists going in that first row and then I'm going to go in the second one. Then I'm going to give it two twists just like I did before and then I'm just going to pull through the front right here and this is where I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, floral wire, put it in just like this, twist it, and hide the wire when I'm done with this part. And now here is our front, and this is where you're going to go, and you're just going to make sure that everything's kind of beautifully open. Don't pull, obviously, too much. And if you're wondering if you can do this with other ribbon, yes, you can. You want to do burlap because burlap is not going to slip, slip, slippity slide like other ribbon. And um, that's the nice thing about doing this with burlap ribbon is because the knots stay here. A lot less chance of going anywhere. And look at this. It's nice and solid. It's going to stand the test of time. Um, in my case, I will be using this letter, Rustoleum Chalk Paint, and it's in linen white. I decided to give the letter N a little bit of character, so I'm grabbing this Sharpie and I'm just going to go right along the line and kind of give it an outline. While my hot glue is warming up, I'm going to show you some options for decor. So we are in summer right now. You could definitely use this sunflower clip. It's quite a large one. This is from the Dollar Tree and just clip it onto one of the loops and bam you have a wreath there's also a butterfly you could put on this sweet little bird for more of a Christmassy look I have a bow from a previous project you could put it in the bottom look at this this would look so beautiful or at the top just a simple pipe cleaner right on top seal it in place For this wreath, I'm going to be using a two of these rolls of 21 inch deco mesh. I got these at Joann's. They are 21 by 30 feet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 10 inch strips, 18 of each. I'm also going to be using a 14 inch metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Here I'm just cutting my 21 inch deco mesh into 10 inch strips. Let's attach our pipe cleaners to our wreath form. Our wreath form is 14 inches, as I said, and this wreath form has six sections. In each section, we're going to put three pipe cleaners. So what I do is we're going to put one pipe cleaner on row one and two. The next pipe cleaner I'm going to put on row three and four and just twist it in the middle. And this is what it's going to look like, just one section. And I'm going to just repeat the process going all the way around. The ones that are closest to the center, I just point them in. The ones on row three and four, I point them out. It's just easier when you're attaching your deco mesh to find these when you do this. 
Now I'm just going to continue going all the way around and attaching my pipe cleaners. Now that our wreath form is ready, I'm just going to move it a little bit to the side so we can get going with our little ribbons. I'm just going to grab one of my strips and start rolling it, kind of like when we do the curly method, and just make a little tube, hold at the ends, and bring it together in half. Then I'm going to just grab it on a halfway mark and I'm going to clamp it. This type of method is also called awareness method because of this, it looks like an awareness ribbon. And then I'm going to grab my second one. Same thing, we're just going to make it a little curl. And I don't keep it too tight, but tight enough. Then we're going to fold it in half. After folding it in half, I'm going to pinch it in the center. Then I'm going to grab my other ribbon and I'm going to make one of them go upside down. And so one is just going to go on top of the other, just like this. So we have two tails right here and two tails right here. And I'm just going to put it straight in the center of my pipe cleaner, just like that. Since I have the ivory on top, I'm going to grab another one and then the ivory is going to go on the bottom and then the brown on top. And I'm going to just go every other, I'm going to make this way and every other, I'm going to invert it and they're going to go every other. This method does go kind of quick because you just roll, roll and put it in place. I'm going to fold it and now my brown one's going to go on top and then this ivory is going to go in the bottom. I'm going to flatten in the center. When I'm putting my ribbon on, I also make sure that if the brown head is over here, the tails are going to be over here. And of course, if the light uh, head is going to be over here, the tails are going to be here. So at the end, it kind of just evens out and it's going to be a beautiful flow. Two tight twists here. I know it looks sparse right now, but don't forget, we still have two of them that are going to go over here and it's going to push it up. For this wreath, I like to do the inside, then the outside. You can also do outside to the inside. But what I do not do is per section because then it'll get confusing for you as far as, okay, what's on top, what's at the bottom. But this way you're like every other and as you go along, it'll all even out. Because we have even numbers of pipe cleaners on the inside and the outside, it's just, it's going to go nicely and you know you're going to have every other as you finish off your circle. This is what the wreath looks so far, and I know it's not much, but when we're done, it's going to look good. So now I'm just going to put it to the side once again, and I'm going to start working on all the pipe cleaners on the outside. And it doesn't matter which one you start with, just start and go every other, just like we did in the center row. Nice and full. I love the contrast in this wreath. So very pretty. Now it's time to start decorating. Here is the ribbon that inspired this wreath. I absolutely think it's gorgeous and beautiful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into 20 inch strips. The edges right here, I'm going to fold it once, really, really small, and then twice just to lock in that edging because I feel like this is the type of ribbon that will fray. If you have a wire sticking out like this, just cut it off. It's very tiny gauge wire. This ribbon I got at Craft Outlet, it is 10 yards. 10 yards is 360 inches. If we divide that by the 18 sections that we have on our wreath, we are going to have 20 inch ribbon. Now this ribbon, I don't want to be shorter than 18 inches. So just make sure when you're folding it in the back, that it's kind of, you know, you're trying to make it as small as possible just to cover that edge so it doesn't fray. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of the ribbon and I'll be right back to put it on the wreath. I'm done with all my ribbon and I'm going to grab my ribbon. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make like a little awareness ribbon. Make sure your tails are facing down. And I'm kind of evening out that the top at the bottom is kind of the same right there in the middle pinching it together, bringing it together. And then this loop right here, I'm going to actually face it out because you want that beautiful ribbon to show. And then the tails are just going to stick right there. So whatever the top ribbon is, right here I have the loop on this side on top. 
I'm going to flip this and then I'm going to put the ribbon right here so that the tails are on top of my loop. Give it two twists and of course we're going to poof it out a little later. But at this point I'm going to send my wire towards the back and then I'm going to tie it in the back. When I'm done, that is when we're going to play with all the tails and stuff. But right now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just do the ribbon going all the way around on every single one of the 18 sections. Just eyeing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Flipping it around so the smooth end is right here. Just like that. Then making my little poof stand out. Since my top loop is right here, I'm going to face it the other way. And same thing, connect it with the pipe cleaners. After two twists, I'm sending the pipe cleaners back. And I'm going to do that going all the way around. This wreath is going to be so adorable with this beautiful plaid ribbon. For the center detail, you can either leave it like this, and that is what I'm going to do with this one because the little bubble covers that little area, but if you don't want, with this one, you can definitely do something like this little cotton pick and just grab one little cotton bud and put the cotton bud in the center. That would look very pretty. I found this little sign. Look at this. It has Vogue style, little high heels. Of course, this is from the Dollar Tree, you guys. Absolutely little picture frame from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is attach some pipe cleaners in the back so we can attach it to the center of our wreath. If you want, you can use staples to connect the little pipe cleaners, but I ran out of staples. So I am going to use a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to seal it with a little ribbon. So I'm just going to cut two little pieces of ribbon. More hot glue on top. I'm going to put my ribbon right over that. And that's just going to seal it in place. And then I'm not gonna worry when I'm going to hang it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now I'm just going to center it and attach both of these in the back on the first row and then just work with the ribbon make sure you have everything sticking out that you want i want all my pretty plaid ribbon to show here and just kind of send the picture back a little bit so you have the beauty of the wreath in the front and that's it this wreath is ready for the fashionista in your life what do you think i think it turned out absolutely adorable filter wreath we're going to need a few basic things of course we're going to need our coffee filters a wreath form hot glue gun and of course hot glue sticks let's go over the specifics on those as far as your coffee filters it depends how big your wreath form is you're going to need anywhere from 200 to 500 and even more if you're using a really big wreath form as far as the wreath form, this wreath form is from the Dollar Tree. This is the most common one at the Dollar Tree. It's 9.8 inches or 24 centimeters. And there is one really important thing you want to remember before we start making this wreath is this wreath form has a coated layer. It's a layer that protects the foam and kind of makes it stronger. And the most important thing when using a hot glue gun on this wreath form is you want to make sure that you're using a low temperature glue gun. Here's the reason why. If you're using a high temperature glue gun, there's a chance you're going to penetrate this protective layer. And once you pass that, you're not going to be able to glue anything because it's basically thick foam. But the only way to hot glue to this wreath form is actually on this protective layer using a low temperature hot glue gun. If you're wondering if you have a low temperature or a high temperature one, here's a great way to know. If you don't have any settings on it and it's a cheap little thing from Michaels, this one's $5 from Michaels. This is a low temperature hot glue gun. If you have a hot glue gun that has settings on it, low and high, you just go to the low and it's going to be the same heat as this one. Let's get started on making our little ruffles. The reason I have my measuring mat is to show you how big my filters are. And 
And these are almost 10 inches. So let me just fold these really quickly in half. Almost five inches, nine and three quarters in length. So these are pretty standard. To get started on this, there's a few way to fold our little uh, ruffles. A lot of people fold them in half, then fold them in half again, and then they'll either fold them in half again, or they'll curl it. Whatever you want to do is fine. Some people, when they fold it like this, they'll just kind of do a little fold in the middle right here. And that is how they're going to hot glue it and go all the way around. You can definitely do that. Today, I'm going to what I call is a fun method. When I find my middle, all I do is I bring one side in to the center, the other side to the center, find my middle and kind of squeeze it. When I find my middle, squeeze it, I kind of start turning it. Turning it and I make a little leaf right here. And this is what I'm going to attach. The reason I do this is I call this kind of lazy method and a fun method because you can definitely do this with your kiddos, with your grandkids. Look at this. I fold it in half. I bring one side in. I bring the other side in. Very nice. It still has the ruffle. Then I kind of crunch it in the middle right here. And then with this one, I'm just trying to kind of flatten it out to make a little petal and twisting it. Did you see how I twisted it just a little bit? That way, this is all secure. And when I hot glue it, it's not going to go anywhere. When it's going to be pushed against some other ones. See how it is? Bam, we already have one for me. And I'm just going to continue doing this. Find my center. Bring it in. Bring it in. Find your middle. With the other hand, hold it. And twist as I'm going along as it's going around you're crunching all of that there you go and then you just sit it up and do like a 90 degree right here and this is fun don't you think this is fun I think it's fun so I'm going to go ahead and just keep on making my little bundles and just twist 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 and a 90 degree angle now it's time to protect your little fingers and I get these finger protectors at the Dollar Tree they come three for a dollar really really nice all right i have some of these <laughs> there's so many of them i basically have two boxes of these i'm not quite sure how many i have but here we go i'm going to start and the way i go is basically we're going to go in kind of these loops right here starting in the middle and do you see it doesn't go through this upper layer of the foam right here and we're just going to start hot gluing them. Every other layer I'm going to go in between. Here's what I mean. I have one, two, three. Then this next layer is going to be right on top pretty much. One and two. And then again we're going to go one, two, three. And then again one, two. As I'm making this wreath I had to stop and just kind of take a moment to take in how absolutely stunning this is any holiday i mean really you put an orange ribbon you have fall you put a pink one and you have spring or yellow you know uh, you put a red one you got valentine's or christmas and it is so absolutely stunning if you're coming to an area where there's nowhere to put the actual paddle the actual part right here so what i do as I actually fold it, fold it up, and then hot glue the ending and just stick it in place. And anywhere you feel like it's empty or it needs a little bit more, using the method I've been using, I don't feel like I need to fill anywhere in. You can see the green wreath, nothing like that. To hang the wreath, you can do one of few things. You can just grab a ribbon and for winter, this would be pretty. Just put it through here. There you go. Hot glue it on itself. Hang it like that and it'll be so pretty. Another option is just to grab some white ribbon. This is going to make for a very, very classy wreath. Whatever the holiday you're going to use it for, you could do that. I am going to kind of do it differently. I want this to be floating. So I'm going to go in the back. I'm going to pick a spot and I'm going to grab a thick gauge wire and just go through the center of my wreath form cut it off 
twist once and then what I like to do is the left one will go to the right the right one will go to the left and then continue twisting and that'll lock it in place and I'm just going to turn it around so all that mess is on the inside and if anything's sticking out what I do is just I literally poke it straight into the wreath and then right here I'm going to give it a little bit of hot glue just to kind of seal it in place because that's what it's going to be hung on and on the other side just seal all that wire in place let it cool i'm going to give this top one a little twist and that is how i'm going to hang it with that little loop as you can see my hot glue has dried and now i'm going to do one more step but look at this wreath you do not have to you could leave it just like it is Oh, how beautiful. What I want to do is I want to grab some rose gold. I'm going to be using the rose gold by Craft Smart here. Give it a little shake. Then I'm going to grab a shabby brush. Just any shabby brush is fine. And we're going to dry brush it on our wreath. So I'm going to tap it a little bit. And I don't want it to be too much. That's why I have my little uh, towel right here in case I have too much on it. And we're going to just kind of brush it like this. It's going to have a little rustic feel to it. But depending on how the light is going to hit it, it's going to glisten a little bit because of the gold that's in this color. And I'm doing it very lightly. No pressure, nothing. Just very, very lightly. So here is the wreath with my rose gold and here it is without but it just brings out that those curls and those ruffles and it looks so absolutely beautiful. A house is made of walls and beams. A home is made of love and dreams. This is the inspiration for today's wreath. So for the supplies, this is the sign we're going to use. For our deco mesh, I am going to be using this light and dark burlap. It's 18 feet. 18 feet is six yards. Look at this. It's going to work so beautifully. The green that we have is pretty much a year-round a green it's not a Christmas green it's more of like a sagey green and it's going to work beautifully with the greenery I got then I have some pipe cleaners the ribbon that I'm going to be using they're both wired they have some writing on them this one's two and a half this one's one and a half inches and uh, the length is four yards for each, we are going to make them work for us. And of course, the wreath form that I'm going to be using is a 14 inch metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Now it's time to attach our pipe cleaners. We're going to be using the 18 pipe cleaner method. The way I like to think about it is break it down into sections. This wreath form has six sections. Each section is going to have three. So the first pipe cleaner is going to go on row one and two, just like this. And then when I give it a twist or two, I'm going to face it towards the center of the wreath form. Pipe cleaner number two is going to go on rows three and four. And same thing, we're just going to do a twist or two. But this time, I'm going to face it out. This is going to help us when we're attaching the deco mesh and twist one and two. As you can see, the outside pipe cleaners are to the sides of the center one. And just like this, we are going to repeat the same thing over and over until we're done with all 18 pipe cleaners. We're going to have six on the inside and we're going to have 12 on the outside. Here is what your wreath form should look like when you're all done. Before we bring in our deco mesh, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start from the inside and work my way out. If I start on this pipe cleaner, I'm going to make 10 inch loops going all the way around. 
until I come back to where I have started. Then here, I'm going to go flat with my deco mesh to one of the outside pipe cleaners to the nearest one and then you're going to continue making 10 inch loops going all the way around until you come back to the one where you started and then we're going to attach my deco mesh is all ready it's being rolled onto the table and i'm going to go in about two inches and start collecting because this roll is so long i always like to go to the tail and make sure that it's fairly even it's not going to be even of course but if there's anything that kind of is too deep push it out so that you have a nice tail and then your loops are going to be nice and even going to that first pipe cleaner on the inside i'm going to give this pipe cleaner a nice twist and then i'm going to grab a zip tie and it doesn't matter how long this one's very long i think this is like an eight inch one six inches just fine if you have those and i'm going to zip tie i zip tied about an inch from my pipe cleaner that way that tail actually is straightened out and it lays nicely against the wreath form any stray deco mesh we're just going to cut off so it's nice and clean Facing my pipe cleaner up, I'm going to start making my 10 inch loops. My 10 inches on this board is this light square right here. So I'm going to put my pipe cleaner right in the beginning, hold it nice and taut, go to the other side, and there's my loop. The reason I showed that is I wanna show you that I'm not being very loose with my loops because we do have six yards and 10 inches should be more than enough, but you do wanna make sure that you don't over grab and then you don't have enough at the end. So just nice and taut, I got my 10 inches and off I go going all the way around. I'm not sure if my camera turned off accidentally, but I wanted to show you the transition between row one and row two right here is where I completed row one and then I went flat right here to the next pipe cleaner and then I started to make 10 inch loops going all the way around I am on my last loop and I'm going to go right there where we started the outside row after a nice twist or two I'm going to cut off about three inches just to make sure I have a nice long tail and I pretty much have no deco mesh left which is what we expected now this tail I'm going to bring it back and put it between the two center rows just like this that way we can attach it to row three using a zip tie i'm going to push it back down right there and i'm zip tying about an inch from the actual pipe cleaner cutting off the tail and then i'm going to make sure that this part is towards the inside of the wreath so it doesn't scratch anything on the outside at this time i'm going around the whole wreath and just opening up those loops making sure that our wreath is nice and and same thing on the outside row of course my wreath is all poofed out now it's time to prepare our 10 inch deco mesh since this is six yards we're going to get 18 pieces at 12 inches usually when I do curls for the wreath bundles I cut them in 10 inches but you can see this is fairly see-through and if you divide six yards by 18 you're going to get 12 inches so you know what why not but if you're using a deco mesh that's kind of on the thicker side 10 inches is more than enough since both of our ribbons are only four yards we're going to get 12 pieces at 12 inches in length i'm going to measure my 12 inches and i'm going to zigzag now that my ribbon is zigzagged i'm just going to go on both sides and cut little triangles and that way we get dovetails and cut the ribbon at the same time with the two and a half inch ribbon being done i'm going to do the same thing with the one and a half inch ribbon as far as the curls that we're going to do we're going to do one pearl per pipe cleaner because we have 18 pipe cleaners and we have 18 pieces of the 10 inch deco mesh but for the ribbon what we're going to do is we're going to put full bundles in the center meaning i'm going to put one of these and one of these in the center and on the outside we're just going to do every other going all the way around because don't forget we still have greenery coming i'm going to start from the inner row make my curl on top of my curl I'm going to put the two and a half inch 
then one and a half inch and that's my bundle I'm going to squeeze it in the center attach it to the pipe cleaner and i'm going to do a few twists at this point you can twist a little bit cut off the excess fold it back or whatever you like to do at this point let's do bundle number two and i'm going to do the same thing first our curl then our two and a half inch ribbon our one and a half inch ribbon crisscross it gather in the center and attach the inside row is done and look how our wreath is transforming already now for the outside row i'm going to grab one of my deco mesh pieces curl to make a cute little curl grab one of your ribbon squeeze in the middle and attach at this point i'm not going to need the pipe cleaner anymore so i'm going to twist about an inch in cut off the excess and just fold it back the next one i'm going to put on is of course the one and a half inch and i'm going to go all the way around using every other now let's take care of the sign the first thing i'm going to do is get rid of the jute cord in the back as always i'm going to be using a few pieces of leftover or scrap piece of felt that i cut into little rectangles i'm going to grab three pipe cleaners the reason i'm using three instead of two is if you have two pipe cleaners right here you do have a chance of the actual sign kind of swaying down this is why you want the third one to hold it up let's just fold in half as usual I make a little seat if you are new to my channel that it's not usual and I do apologize for that but this is how I usually attach pipe cleaners to a sign now I'm putting some hot glue on top and bottom and my felt piece is going to go right over the top and it's going to just melt that pipe cleaner in place and no matter what this is not going to move this method it has not failed me so far so guess what i keep on doing it now that my pipe cleaners are dry i'm just going to fold them down and i want to take care of this part right here because this is messed up this leaf is glued on sideways it doesn't match the greenery that i'm using necessarily so i decided to remove it now i'm going to choose one of the greenery pieces from the actual greenery that i'm using I'm going to shorten it because there's a little i don't know like a little hole right here so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to remove that and kind of work it in this way and then i'm going to use the greenery to cover that up I'm going to hot glue here hot glue there then the top part to attach the sign i'm moving as much of this ribbon as i can to the side so it's facing out i can put it in place later but i really want to sink the sign in what i have found is when you sink the sign into the wreath a little bit it just becomes a part of the wreath it looks natural it looks beautiful and so let me just flip this over i'm just going to do one twist on each of the connections then i'm going to see what it looks like if it looks nice and centered on the wreath and then i'm going to come back and tighten it i think it's sitting really nicely since everything is in place including our sign our deco mesh except the greenery of course i'm going to take care of the back right now so first things first i'm going to look where my top is flip that over and i'm going to grab the jute cord that we removed from this sign in the beginning i'm going to put it on an intersection on row three and just do one tie because this is a fairly thick jute cord and then i'm going to pull it through the front of the actual wreath form that way the knot is hidden and all you have is the hanging loop next i'm going to bring in a placemat i get these at the dollar tree I'm going to be using three zip ties and i use tiny ones these are four inch zip ties and the reason i like them is they go through the netting really easily I'm going to zip tie it Cut off the tail and send this little nub thing to the back. That way the walls aren't scratched or wherever this wreath is going to hang. I'm looking at my first zip tie, draw an imaginary triangle, and that's where my second and third zip tie are going. I'm going to have a hard time parting with this one because I think it's absolutely 
just beautiful. You could hang it somewhere in the house. The wording of the sign is just oh so lovely. And now I'm going to go around and make sure my ribbon is nicely laid out. This is usually my last step. But in this case, because the greenery is going to go in between, I need to do this before I attach the greenery. I'm going to bring in my glue skillet. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to detach all this greenery. I have all my greenery sorted so that I can make sure that everything fits nicely. Now, I have two more of these that I used on there. I'm going to put one on this side and the other one on this side. Now I'm just going to dip into my little pot and in it goes just like that. And I'm just attaching it to the deca mesh that surrounds it. I have three of these and I'm basically going to put them in between. And the rest of the greenery, I'm just going to start scattering throughout. Now that the greenery is in, I'm going to go around one more time and make sure the ribbon is out, make sure the greenery is laying nicely, and that's it. You are ready to hang this beautiful wreath in your home 365 days a year because it will match any season. And I think it's just one of those pretty wreaths you can actually hang inside your home somewhere. We are using these non-slip shelf liners from the Dollar Tree and you are going to need six of them. Whatever coloration you are using, you can find these at Target, Walmart. Now, you know me, I work only from Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree has this gray, this ivory, then this kind of like a dark uh, beige and they also have black the black is really really rare so if you find it grab it besides the six rolls we are also going to be using a 14 inch metal wreath form this towel colander and you are going to need a ton of zip ties to get started make yourself some room because you are going to need to stretch this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in half I'm going to cut where I just folded Put one on the side, grabbing this half a sheet, folding it in half once more, and I'm going to cut it once again. I'm going to put this one on the side and I'm going to fold one more time. This piece comes out to be approximately seven and a half inches. So I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to fold them in half again, cut them about seven and a half inches. And this way it comes out to about six inches. I'm going to move on and I'm going to cut all of these and then in half. And then I have my little rectangle. And so I'm going to cut up just like I did all six rolls. Quick question, how many of you have ever done a shelf liner wreaths or ever wanted to do a shelf liner wreaths or maybe how many of you after watching this video are thinking hmm i might give it a try let me know down below i got my ivory done now it's time to do this gray and by the way this gray is a really pretty gray. I have my shelf liners all cut up. I have 90 pieces of the zip tie. And if this is your first time with me, this is how I count my rings. I count them one, two, three, and four as being the outer one. So we are going to fill in the second and the third. In the third one, we are going to put nine pieces in the second we are going to put six pieces making it a total of 15 so 15 times 6 is 90 so we are going to need 90 of these pieces the way I like to do is I, as I put my rectangle standing up so my little bundles are going to be nice tight and full and I'm just bringing them together tell you the truth I really enjoy doing this part and then 
it's going to look like a little bow. Then I'm grabbing my zip tie and you can start with the second or the third. I always just start with coming from the inside and you're just going to zip tie it together. This is one instance where I don't cheap out on my zip ties. This needs to be strong and then I'm going to do the same thing and I will alternate in color also. I'll do ivory gray, ivory gray and really doesn't matter what color you have the zip ties. They're not going to be shown. We are done with the second row. What do you guys think? I think it turned out nice and look how fluffy this is. Not not bad right and then now I'm just I'm going to go make sure that my zip ties are all nice and tight and then I'm just going to use wire cutters and the really cool thing about this wreath is this thing is going to stand the test of time because it's so sturdy starting our second section or our third row because this is ivory I'm going to start with gray by the way this is not one of these wreaths that's going to take you forever to make this actually goes by really really quickly and definitely not as long as the tablecloth wreath but hey I love both of them and I love making both of them but yeah this is much much faster and look at this I'm just going along here and there so this is going to be really, really quick. All right. And here is one section all done. And I like the fact that it's full. You cannot see through it. Here is the wreath part finished. We're still going to decorate it, but I think it turned out so beautiful. It's so full. And as I said, six in the second row and nine in the third row. Here is the colander. I tried to take the handle off as you can see. I broke it a little bit, but you know what? I'm still not giving up. Okay, so that worked. I got the handle off and this part that's um, that's kind of bent, broken, I'm just going to hot glue it. It's plastic. It's going to stick together really well. And then this piece of the colander, that should be easy to take off. My mom has chickens in her kitchen so that's why I chose this towel and for the fact that it matches my colors really nicely. First cut this in half and then I'm going to cut pretty much that same and I'm just going to lay one over the other and the reason I'm doing this is because I just want to have a really making sure that nothing peeks through if the sun peeks through the door or whatever that it's going to be okay. At this point I'm not putting too much glue just a little bit of a dollar to hold this in case we have to tighten anything up and we have room to move now I'm going to do these sides bring all these sides together I am realizing I should have done this before but uh, so here's what I'm going to do on um, there's holes right here and I'm going to uh, attach my chenille wire and I would really like to see if I can push it through I can't believe that worked on both sides. All right, and here is my completed centerpiece. I think this turned out absolutely cute. I just used the end pieces of the towel, hot glued them in the center right here. But here's what I want to point out. The chenille wires that we're putting in, don't put them against the colander right here. Put them again, a little further. Like this is where it's going to be attaching because the chicken itself, the top of the colander is going to be towards the top. Let's turn this baby around and the reason I did this is because then this part the this side of the colander is not going to be bulging out against the wall so I'm just going to bring this in it looks good I just think it's so neutral any season any area of your home obviously kitchen would be your number one place or maybe you have a door going out of your kitchen to the outside you could put it there or you could just hang it on the wall in your kitchen this is absolutely stunning and i love the way that this turned out here are the supplies we're going to need for this wreath and we're going with three main colors i have this light green then gray and white and as you can see that kind of carries on into our picture home is where my cat is here's my little guy going to be using some pipe cleaners 
Then I am going to have a few felt pieces because I attach my signs using felt pieces and pipe cleaners. The ribbon that I'm going to be using, they're both wired. As far as my deco mesh, I'm going to use two rolls of the 10 inch deco mesh by 10 yards. And of course, we're going to need a wreath form. This is a 14 inch wreath form. To cut our deco mesh, I'm just going to use a little basket like I usually do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay them together just so it's quicker to cut and I'm going to be needing 15 strips of each color 30 total cutting my deco mesh into 20 inch strips and then just rolling it and putting it to the side. Next, we're going to cut the ribbon. I'm going to be cutting each of the ribbon at 12 inches and we're going to need 15 strips of each ribbon. As always, I'm going to zigzag until I get my 15 strips and then I'm going to cut dovetails on the ends. I got my 15 strips and now I'm just going to go on the ends, fold in half and make my little triangle. There you go. Same thing with the two and a half inch ribbon. We're going to do 15 strips at 12 inches each. Now it's time to prepare our pipe cleaners. They're just 12 inch pipe cleaners that I'm going to fold in half and just cut them right there. And as always, I'm going to fold them in a little V so they're ready to go as we need them. Now it's time to make our cruffles or ruffles. And the way we're going to attach them to our wreath form is we're going to do five per section. And since we have green and white, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to continue get going every other green, white, green, white, all the way around. As far as our ribbon bundles, we also are going to attach them every other. So just pick whichever deco mesh would look better with the ribbon. I think the ribbon will stand out out really nicely against the white so when I'm attaching the white cruffles I'm also going to attach the ribbon and then the green ones are going to be by themselves you're also going to need some kind of a clamp the way I'm going to lay my deco mesh is it's going to roll from the table meaning it's curling up that way we can just do a quick few curls so maybe one two and then three clamp in the center push it back now we're going to do the same thing on this side one two three and bring it together in the middle by the way both of my deco mesh rolls are from hobby lobby now i'm just grabbing my pipe cleaner going to twist it once or twice and put it right on my wreath form and i'm going to put it around two of the center rings here i'm going to just make it tight and then fold over so our green one is on now the white one same thing rolling away from the table we're going to do two to three rolls clamp let's do the other side and bring it together on top of the white one I'm going to put one of these and one of these before i put it on I'm going to fold it in half find my center then bring it together in the center and put it straight over just like this now we have our pipe cleaner right on there look how nice that was i like putting it in a v now we're going to just do nice tight twist or two just like that look how pretty this is and attach it next to my green one you can definitely prepare all of these and then put them on the wreath form or just like i'm doing just do one at a time take your time watch whatever you're watching or listen to the music and look at that now another green one now the white and if you don't have one of these clips that i'm using that's not a big deal use a clothespin use whatever you have just to grab it and keep it in place you're going to need this obviously for just a few seconds so definitely use whatever you have on hand don't go out and buy one of these you really don't have to i'm just folding in half making sure i got my center there you go and i'm just bringing it together and right on top I am really loving the color combo so far. It's so pretty. The first section is done and it's only five of the cruffles. And since we started with the green, ended with the green, the next one we're going to start with the white, end with the white, and at the end, it's going to balance out really, really nicely. So Leo decided since this wreath is for him, about him, to be right in the center, but then that's kind of normal, right? <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> 
so sweet. All right, I have a one more little cruffle to put on. As you can see, I have five in each section going all the way around, and they are connected on rows two and three, the two middle rows. That is how each of the bundles are attached. As far as the ribbon, don't worry about it until we are all done with the wreath. So next we have the sign. I'm going to go ahead and take this part off. Don't throw away this jute cord. You can definitely use it to hang the wreath. This sign is quite large. It's 12 inches in height and about eight inches in width. And so I decided to do four pipe cleaners. I'm going to grab them, fold them in half and then make this flat little surface. And I know a lot of people attach their little pipe cleaners or wires differently. You just do what works well for you. I have always done it this way and I like doing it this way. So I'm going to put some hot glue right on there, then my pipe cleaner, then more hot glue on top, the bottom, and of course over the pipe cleaner, and your piece of felt right over. Now that all the hot glue is nice and dry, we are ready to attach to our wreath. Put this in the center, flip this over, and then start attaching. Just finding a spot, pushing the pipe cleaners through, and I'm going to do a twist. Final look, yes, I like that. Now we're going to find the top and I'm going to take the jute cord that we used before and I'm just going to do a little knot or two. And I have my little hanging loop. We took care of that. Now we're going to cover the back. This placement is from the Dollar Tree. These are four inch zip ties. I usually get my zip ties on Amazon. Let me cut that off. And always don't forget to send this little nub to the back so it's nice and smooth in the back. I'm gonna find two more spots. I just draw a triangle with my fingers and that's where I put my next zip tie in. So here's my second one and sent it back. And of course my third one. And there you go, your back is beautiful. You have a hanging loop, let's flip. And now this is where you can finally get to that ribbon and open it up, make it look pretty. The most important thing with the ribbon is if you have two or three, just kind of arrange them every other so you know you don't have the green with the green and make what I call little flowers. Just kind of smooth them out, bring them into the light, nice and beautiful. I'm going to continue playing with the ribbon and then we are ready to hang this beautiful, beautiful wreath. All the supplies we're going to be using today are from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start with this foam wreath and then a pack of potpourri and also cotton balls. Now I'm simply hot gluing the cotton balls to the front, the sides, and the inside of my foam wreath. Okay, you guys, now that everything is covered, look how gorgeous this is. If I was selling this or this was going on a door with a glass, I would definitely put a white ribbon to cover the green but it really look at this all the sides I made sure there was no green now for this part I'm going to be taking all of these curly cues kind of and I'm going to be breaking them apart because I want to make sure that I have enough that's why I'm doing that and I'm just throwing some hot glue right on the edge and it's going in wherever I feel like it needs it. If there's any areas that will kind of like peek through like this, you can either put a little bit more cotton in or whatever you like. See, I decided to stretch this open and I'm just, I have a little cotton and I'm just going to insert it right there.
put a little ribbon right here just to know where I was going to put the original ribbon. I'm going to take this off in a second, but before I do that, I decided to use this burlap ribbon and it does have wire in it. I'm just going to do that simple bow that they have there. And I think that's about right. Um, theirs is kind of flat. I actually really don't like the bow they had, but all right, what can I say? Tail, and, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hot glue these guys together really lightly. Then grab another piece. Let's get the bow a little bit puffed out. And then here where I have my little blue ribbon, that's where I'm going to come in with the rest of the ribbon. And I really don't want it too long, so I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm just going to hot glue the bow in place. Look at all of this, it's still left over. So you really do not need much. And this is going to be enough for this project and for the next one. So this is absolutely awesome. You just need one pack. This is an old home sign that I had in my stash and it was this dark navy blue. So I gave it a good three coats of white acrylic paint. Here is this fluffy, beautiful scarf that I absolutely loved, but you know, it was time to move on. And I'm just going to pin it to my little foam wreath that I got at the Dollar Tree, and then just start going around and around the wreath. After fluffing my wreath out, I decided to embellish it with a little bow. And I'm making the bow out of grow grain ribbon that I had on hand. And this is one inch ribbon. And so I made the big one, which is going to be the white one. And then just used a paper clip to hold it together while I got my second one going. And the second one is going to be a gray one. And I did the same thing, a simple little bow. And then I put it on top of the white bow. And to finish off our bow, I will be using a polka dot bow that I got at the Dollar Tree out of all places, right? And it's so cute, and I just used it as my top bow. Then I brought all my bows together using a chenille wire because that is what I will be using to attach the actual bow to my wreath. Next, I'm working on the tail, cutting off some excess ribbon, and then singeing the edges of the ribbon. Cover the middle of the bow, I just cut off a little piece of that polka dot ribbon, and I'm hot gluing the ends to the back of the bow. A few tricks about working with grow grain ribbon. For example, here I am, I just pushed down one of the tails, and I hot glued in the back how I want that tail to stay. I will be doing this to all the tails and also where I want my bow to stand up. You could definitely dab a little bit of hot glue right behind the bow so you can place it in the way that you want it. To attach my home sign to my wreath, I'm just attaching two pieces of chenille wire to the back of my home sign. I think this bow turned out super cute and super easy. Anyone can do this bow. Now you can attach it anywhere you want on the wreath along with the home sign. To get started on this frame burlap wreath, I'm using an old frame. First thing I'm doing is giving it a good clean. Removing all that backing. Now I'm going to give it two coats of the white Rust-Oleum chalk in linen white and let it dry. Here is the burlap that we're using. Isn't this absolutely stunning? I got it at 50% off at Hobby Lobby. And the frame that I'm using is a Dollar Tree frame. And this is the little one. It comes in a pack of two. And I'm just using, obviously, one of them. This is a cream lace burlap ribbon. And it is 15 feet long. And the width of it is five and a half inches. All you have to do for this is just feed it through the wreath 
just like I'm doing in half and just keep on folding it in half and feeding it up. This is one of the easiest burlap wreaths you can ever make. It just, it does not get easier than this. You just feed both of them through. And because this is a smaller wreath form, it'll work. And it's so beautiful and it's so simple. Let's talk about the burlap you can use here. As long as it's over five inches, you will have a beautiful and full wreath. And obviously, if your burlap is one-sided or it does not have print on either side, you can just pull it through. It doesn't matter. But if you're using one like me that either has a print on one side or maybe like mine has a lace on it, I would put that on the inside. So I'm folding that kind of in because when you fluff it up and kind of like open it up, that little print or the lace is going to peek through and it's just going to show a little bit of the elegance. And this is another reason why I did not do anything to the frame but keep it white is because of that lace peeking through it's just going to balance everything out and this wreath this type of wreath i can use year round in any room in any style i mean obviously because of the lace it's you know a little bit more elegant but still you can use it year round it's absolutely stunning you gotta try if you haven't done one of these wreaths you have to try at least once because you're gonna do it and you're gonna be like nadia i don't even want to do any other wreath this is it this is it because it's so simple you can make it with your kids or grandkids this is absolutely one of the simplest and prettiest wreaths you can ever make with burlap once you feel your first section is nice and full you don't have to do anything but just feed the burlap through the next section. Pull it up nice and tight so it, you know, it kind of tugs right there between the sections so there's not too much, you know, fluff in the back. And then that's it. I just very carefully pull it up and then continue doing the same thing. Folding it in half, pulling it up, and just scrunching it to the side. Here it is all complete. All I had to do was just fluff it up a little bit and it's all done. Now I'm grabbing a leftover piece of burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm hot gluing it to the back of the frame. Obviously use caution here and then just feeding it through the outer ring of the wreath going around and again hot gluing it in the same spot in the back so it's nice and secure. And that's it. You are done with this wreath. And I'm going to be standing this up. I'm not going to be hanging. But if you are going to hang it, you could either use more burlap ribbon or maybe some jute cord to hang it. And that's it. You're all done. And I think it turned out so beautiful. If you're still here and watching this, oh my goodness, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And in the comments below, don't forget to let me know which wreath was your favorite. With that being said, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And for more wreath tutorials, I know, but you know, just in case you're still in the mood to watch some, I attached two videos right here. Just click on the one that catches your eye. With that being said, thank you so much for being with me and we will see you in our next video. Mwah! Bye guys.